Imperial Archangel, pretty standard list. Now uh, his opponent, Team Italia, it's Gerard Fabiano. Ooh. Gerard Very Fabiano, cool. one of many of the people that are here at this event this weekend, who are um, not only Gerard is someone you see at events currently, but he's also one of those blasts from the pasts. Um, Mike Brigoli is here. Uh, I'm not sure if he's playing or if he's just uh, birding. I saw him watching a Darwin Castles match. I see old school judge Nat Fairbanks out there. Wow. wow. Nat Fairbanks. Can he hear me? I don't know. <laughs> I think he's engaged in conversation with uh, with, with Nicholas, uh, one of our staff members here. So we're, we're already Turn deep in the Turn one, game here. Gristlebrand in the yard. Yep, we have an Entomb for a Gristlebrand. Gerard only had a Marsh Flats. So Gerard's deck in, in the, well, at least in the main deck, it's not set up too well to um, to beat this Reanimator deck. After sideboard, he gets two Nihil Spell Bombs and one Surgical, but that's it. Now, Gerard has four Inquisition of Kozilek, for him to Torok, one Thought Season the main, so nine discard spells. Um, but that's not going to help him here, as he did not have one turn one. And that's an exhum. exhum. Not even a reanimate to cost Luis some life. A straight up exhum at 20 life. Now, the difference between a Gristlebrand and a Jenga Texas is very, very simple. If Gerard happens to have his Swords to Plowshares in hand, the Gristlebrand will still supply Luis Perez with seven cards, where a Jin Cataxis would not. Right. So Gerard cracks his Marsh Flats, going to 19. And he has quite a hole to climb out of here. I'm not sure how he's going to deal with a uh, potential Force of Will. Get him later. We'll see. I mean, I think that, honestly, the game is already over. Yeah. I don't see any way for Gerard to come out of this. Yeah, Luis would have to get pretty unlucky not finding a Force of Will in the top, uh, what's that, 14 cards? Plus his, uh, plus his starting hand? Pretty unlikely. Luis, interestingly enough, also has one Cabal Therapy in his deck. It's a pretty strange card for a Reanimator deck. Well, one of the things he can do is he can entomb it and then have it. Right. So, I mean, usually he doesn't want to do that, but there are absolutely, you know, moments where you want to therapy and you don't mind losing a random big guy. Exactly. When you're, say, overloaded on um, on the reanimation spells. Yeah, or if you have, an, you know, um, just a need for something to resolve. Right. So Gerard's attempt at Swords to Plowshares is Force of Will by Luis. He also drew seven cards there. Luis has named his deck, I'll Be Back. That's funny. <laughs> now this archetype really got its uh, kind of, I guess, boost in the eyes of the legacy community with Ely Cassis, uh, his build that was a Jin Cataxis build that really kind of revolutionized this archetype. Yeah, definitely. Jinga Taxius and Gristlebrand. Oh, actually, the Jinga Taxius, the Gristlebrand, and the Elesh Norn, all creatures that have been printed in the past year. So I guess, uh, I guess Wizards are just really pushing the bounds on what fatties can do. Well, I think one of the things that they're doing is they're often making their deck or their creatures without consideration for some of these busted formats that we see. And I don't think of Legacy as a, a broken format, but from a power consistency standpoint, the stuff that goes on can be really absurd. Right. It's often a degenerate format, yeah. as we're seeing now. And we are seeing a judge call right now. Um, I'm not sure what this is regarding, but uh, we'll, we'll let you know as soon as we know. Yeah, um, I think it might have to do with Luis's discard phase for some reason. I don't I think maybe he forgot to discard something like that. I'm not sure. But we'll find out. Now, Gerard, uh, ways to deal with that. He has four swords to plowshares. He has three Liliana of the Veil. He has three Vindicate. So not a heck of a lot considering he's already used one swords. And that Gristlebrand is just going to provide nigh endless fodder for Luis. But, you know, the fatties of choice used to be things like Verdant Force, stuff like that. Now, every single creature in Luis's deck has a new border, for example. Every single creature is newer than Shards of Alara, is the oldest creature in this deck. <laughs> so, really, I mean, the power creep on creatures is just, it's, it's enormous. Yeah. One of the right ways that Wizards has been balancing that 
is by putting casting costs that are perhaps appropriate for these creatures. Right. Well, reanimate show and tell style decks, they don't really care if the casting cost is appropriate. They work out other ways to get them into play. Exactly. And now, you know, you can criticize the creature power all you want, but if we look at the spells, Exhume, it's a card from Urza Saga, Entomb, a card from Odyssey, Force of Will, Careful Study, Reanimate, Brainstorm, Days, Animate Dead, every card but Ponder uh, is, is very old in this deck. Yeah. So you can criticize the, the creep, but I don't think it's a problem. Now, if you want to... Uh... If you want to look at really, really bizarre oracle text, check out Animate Dead. <laughs> that's now, a fun I, one. That, that's, that I will leave as homework for you uh, at your computers, but, but that's a weird one. So who do you think this judge was called by? Gerard. Yeah, he, he doesn't look too happy right now. I see no reason for Luis to call a judge. So looking ahead to the sideboards, because uh, I, I don't, it'll be pretty tough for Gerard to pull this game out. This, this game should, should be over in a few turns, unless he can pull something miraculous here. I actually think Gerard is not very well set up for the reanimation um, matchup. He has Nile Spellbomb instead of a card like, say, for example, Tormod's Crypt or Leyline. And uh, I don't know how I feel about that, honestly. I think Nihil Spellbomb might be a little greedy. Um, and uh, other than that, he's got Red Blast and Pyro Blast and Surgical Extraction times one as options. And I believe two Duress to join uh, four Inquisition of Kozilek and four Him to Turok and one Thoughtseize in his main deck as possible ways to fight. But honestly, that does not seem very exciting to me. No, he is not well set up to fight this reanimator deck at all. Uh, even if he wins game two on the play, he'll still have to win a game three on the draw, which can be pretty tough. Yeah. And it's not as though Gerard's deck actually puts down a fast clock. Um, Team Italia, as a, as a uh, archetype, it's gained in recent sets Thalia, which I think is actually a really, really impressive card. And uh, it has a lot of cards that kind of are uh, very utility-oriented, similar to the Dead Guy Ale um, black-white base, but touches in red for a very, very small amount of cards. The red in this deck is Grim Lava Mancer. Um, and it used to be that Gerard also had access to Figure of Destiny, which I actually think I kind of liked in that deck. Um, but the way I was going to advocate going with it would have been with, uh, with Mox, so that you could go turn one figure, pump it, turn two, pump it, and have a 4-4 four four on attacking on turn two. Because what right now is uh, lacking from Gerard's deck is the ability to be particularly fast. Um, he comes out slow, and so that means that he really has to grind out games. And that, that can be a rough proposition in a lot of matchups. Yeah, it, it really can. I mean, if you look at Gerard's one-drop slot, he has three Grim Lava Mancer, he has one top, he has four swords, four Inquisition, and one thought sees. Now, as far as legacy decks go, that's not that many one drops. Um, and a lot of which don't really affect the board right away. Grim Lava Mancer takes a turn. Uh, thought sees, Inquisition, they don't affect the board. So, like you said, Gerard's deck seems to prey on the, um, on on the fair, slower decks. On the fair form. matchups on the for the most top. Exactly. Luis's deck, uh, <laughs> not quite a fair deck. I agree. I mean, <laughs> Lu Lu Luis is uh, playing one of the, um, hey, let's make this not fun for you decks. And personally, I really love uh, the Gristle brand uh, reanimation package, but it certainly is not fun. Now, if Gerard really wanted to be able to fight some of these decks, um, I mean, Dredge is a real thing. Oh, here we go. Him to Turok. So it looks like Luis has discarded. Uh, you see the Iona there in his bin. And Gerard will him away an Entomb and a Polluted Delta. Not what he wanted to hit. So Luis untaps and draws. That Gristlebrand is about to go to work on Gerard's life total. Reanimate, targeting Iona. 
I wonder if this will be the one that shuts down the game. <laughs> Uh, I think so. White means that there is nothing that Gerard can do. He can Liliana of the Veil. He's got three Lilianas. Yep, but that's it. And here comes Gristlebrand. Yep. <laughs> that Gerard to, nine, to 12 and Luis up to 19, so the life totals reverse themselves. And I see a force of will in Luis's hand, so this game is effectively over, assuming he has a blue card in his top 14 cards. Which is probably I a have a sense fair, he might. Uh, yeah, a pretty fair statement. Pretty fair assessment. Here it comes. Boom! Boom. <laughs> Force of will. No, Number thank you. Two. Sorry, Gerard. Let's move to the next game. Yo, and of course the Iona did name white. Shut off those swords to plowshares. To the next. You know, I would love to, other than this surgical extraction, I mean, I would even love to see a card like uh, Extirpate. You know, yes. like... Definitely. I mean, the surgical can be cast for zero mana, but it can be Force of Will. I think that, honestly, um, the zero mana is not good enough for a deck that is um, otherwise playing fair. Right. Um, I think that if you were a blue deck, Surgical might be far more reasonable, particularly if you have a card like Snapcaster Mage. But when you're not a blue deck, I think what you really want to have happen is if you're going to go for that kind of targeted graveyard removal, I think you want to just spend the mana and make sure it happens. Right. I feel like, um, I feel like maybe Gerard could use some Leyline of the Voids, too. Something. I mean, I don't think there's enough attention paid in his sideboard to the graveyard. Two Nile spell bombs, one surgical extraction. Now, it could be, there is an alternate explanation for why he might be going this direction. He could be going like this. Huh. I can't beat Dredge. Right. How much effort do I want to take to beat Dredge? Huh. I still am struggling to beat Dredge. How about we dial it way back and just put in a couple of cards... <laughs> And if I get lucky, I get lucky, and if I don't, that's how it goes. Exactly. I'm allowed one loss in the Swiss. There's probably not that much dredge out there, he's thinking, which there isn't. I, I, was, uh, I was definitely walking around round one and round two, and um, very, very little. I saw maybe two dredge decks in the room. I did see some reanimator, though. I saw Reed Duke reanimating it. Uh, he was reanimating a gristle brand on turn three. Um, a few other players I didn't recognize doing the same thing. Now... The common path that we see from these reanimation decks is that they switch into being a show-and-tell deck. And uh, as a show-and-tell deck, one of the things that they have access to is a way to dodge graveyard hate. Right, exactly. Now, basically, Luis has to play the guessing game, what hate is my opponent bringing in? If he's bringing in Leyline, I want Echoing Truths and Show-and-Tells. If he's bringing in Tormod's Crypts, I want, uh, well, he probably wants the Show-and-Tells. If he's bringing in something simple, like Surgical, uh, maybe Spell Pierce. So he, he really has to decide uh, what route he wants to take, but the luxury of being up a game is that if he guesses wrong, he always has game three. So the player is shuffling up right now. Gerard will be on the play for game two. And expect him to aggressively mulligan now. He didn't know what he was playing against, so he kept a little bit of a slower hand, one without any disruption. Risky keep, but his hand looked pretty good. He had swords into him, into Liliana. Seems like a pretty good opening. Gerard named his deck Team Italia kind of as a joke um, because Team America was a deck name that we would see for a certain kind of slightly more aggressive bug-based deck. And by slightly more aggressive, what I mean is Tomb Stalker, generally speaking. Tarmogoy. Yeah. And uh, Team America, you would imagine, would be a red, white, and blue deck. Of course. But it is not. It should, it should have Lightning Angel in it, but it does not. So Team Italia, uh, not the colors you would think it is. Instead, it's the 
It, this is not Red, black, shard. and white. What, what is this? <laughs> yeah, red, black, and white. I believe the term is a wedge. A wedge, okay. Yeah. As opposed to a shard, I As, like it. Yeah, and uh, the uh, flag for Italy is red, white, and green. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just slightly off. Right. Um, more close, though, than Team America is. And uh, I've, I've already brought this up in the past when Gerard... Um, kind of unveiled this list. This is really a full circle moment, if you ask me. Uh, Gerard Fabiano really cut his teeth in the Magic Pro Tour with uh, Pro Tour Junk, the green, black, white deck. And this deck is very reminiscent of Pro Tour Junk, which amusingly was a deck that I designed a million years ago in an attempt to be an update of a red, black, white deck <laughs> that nice. looks exactly like what Gerard is at now, um, except for obviously older cards. Right. So Magic does come full circle. The junk deck, if you're unfamiliar, black, green, white, um, and uh, just just a very very basic creature disruption deck. Yeah, I mean, essentially, junk is the ag aggressive version of a deck like Rock, where Rock tends to be a mid-range control deck, junk tends to be a mid-range aggro deck. Now, um, we've seen some success with junk players in recent memory, with uh, people playing essentially the update to junk that Brian Kowal did with Knight of the Reliquary and uh, Dark Confidant as the basis for this deck. Brad Nelson, I believe, uh, top eighting in Columbus uh, not so long ago with the deck, and it has had a smattering of successes here and there. Um, um, even though I, I personally think what people are calling junk there is far closer to rock. It really doesn't have that aggressive uh, start that junk likes to have. Right, you know, Junk was really good for a while there. Uh, nowadays, though, it doesn't seem like it's on the right end of the spectrum. Yeah, I agree. Like Maverick does I what think it's trying to do Exactly. Better. I think that Maverick is exactly what uh, Junk wants to be doing. Um, that hand disruption is actually less exciting in a lot of ways than simply putting out cards that are problematic and having the game fall apart that way for your opponent. Right. And that looks like we're back to us while the judges work out what they're going to be doing with uh, the match in, at hand. I mean, I don't know how things are going to go from here with uh, this particular match, but let's just do a quick check. I see 60 cards. Yep, 60-15 and 60-15. Okay, so that's not the situation. No, I'm We're not quite sure what's going on with that judge call, but we'll find out and we'll tell you. Exactly. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan. I'm Zach Hall. And you can find us on Twitter. I am Adrian L. Sullivan. <laughs> and I'm ZC Hall yep. right there. I'm on Twitter there. I'm on Facebook at that same slash Adrian L. Sullivan. Um, right over here, you can see at SCG Live. That's how you can reach every single one of us right. that are doing the coverage here. Me, Zach our directors, uh, anyone that's over there, Glenn Jones, who's right. doing our written side coverage. Nick Saban, Kelly Anderson, yep, they absolutely. can all see it. Um, and then also get into the conversation at the hashtag SCGMA to uh, join people in the conversation about this Worcester area tournament. And there you see the players. We're getting the information from our table judge right now. We'll have that for you in a second. Looks like Gerard is not happy. I don't... He's definitely the one who called the judge both of these times. I'm not sure what he had an issue with. I mean, it's possible that he expected his opponent to get some sort of warning or something like that, and uh, when that didn't happen, I think he might, and this is just conjecture, uh, he might have been thinking that more should happen. But. Right. So it looks like the players uh, are back in their seats right now. As you can see, Gerard on the left, Luis on the right. And here they go. They're drawing their openers. Gerard on the play. I mean, I think Gerard is going to need to have a lot of luck to be able to both pull off not only just this game now, but then come around if he were to have that luck and then win with Luis Perez on the play. That's, That's just, the tough part. Yeah, I think that this is going to be a rough one. I would, uh, I'd, I'm not sure if I'd say Gerard is favored right now, but I would definitely say it's, uh, it's even odds right now with him on the play, him having sideboarded three graveyard uh, hate spells. Okay. So. Um, I know that, uh, in my opinion, um, I think Gerard is still a slight underdog, even on the play. Hmm. Now, I see, basically, uh, the reason that I disagree with that is just because he has uh, seven one-mana disruption spells after board. He kept pretty fast, and I don't think he would keep any hand without one of those one mana discards. So we'll see that. Uh, Luis won't have the opportunity to daze it because he'll be on the draw. Uh, but we'll see. You know, Gerard is known for his loose keep sometimes. That is a true thing. <laughs> <laughs> so Luis has his six. 
We'll see if they're good enough. Bloodstained Meyer gets cracked for Gerard. He's going to look for a scrub land, presumably. Most important land for his deck. Oh, no, bad lands. Interesting. I don't think he should have any red cards post sideboard. Maybe some number of the blasts. But even so, he can't really overload his deck with those. I mean, I don't mind the blasts because they do so much work in protecting a disruption spell. And also, um, Careful Study is one of the paths that Luis Perez is going to have, as well as Show and Tell, one of the paths that Luis Perez is going to have to get something into play that's absurd. Right. So it looks like that is what Luis is about to do. Careful Study. And there it is. And I have to imagine Gerard's going to blast it. The only reason he might not is if he wants uh, is if he wants the hand size to be low, so uh, so he can him. Careful study. No one mana spell from uh, Gerard. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what he kept here. Bristlebrand, Sphinx of the Steel Wind, discarded. And Luis, not maintaining Graveyard Order. There we go. And he's required there, to maintain Graveyard go. Order now. We are now in the format where all of the Graveyard Nazis, me one of them, um, <laughs> have, have our way. So Gerard untaps. And you know what? I'm going to put him on, uh, on both a Blast and a Surgical here. I just don't see how he can keep without having one of those cards or both. I mean, there's also the possibility that he was so flustered by um, the judge ruling going hit not his way that he wasn't paying attention to having a tight keep. Right. I've, I've definitely seen Gerard keep uh, Six Lands Praetor's Council uh, in a limited tournament. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, that was a GP feature match. Did he win? He did. Yay! <laughs> so there's a Nihil Spellbomb from Gerard, leaving one up. So he'll be able to draw a card and pop Luis's graveyard on command. So here we go. Brainstorm from Luis, main phase, and there's a red blast. Gerard may be trying to take advantage of Luis's lack of land, but there's the second one. Ponder will resolve. He sees land, brainstorm, and exhume maybe? Not sure about that last one. So if Gerard can land something like a Thalia, a Dark Confidant, a Liliana right here. I think the card he really wants is a Dark Confidant. Just to keep fuel in the engine. Well, here's an Inquisition. So we're going to see Luis's hand. We have an Exhume. We have a, Pollute, a Swamp. We have a Delta. And we have an Archangel. I guess wow. there's an answer. Right? What you taking? Well, no choices. Nope. Just, just take the one you can take. Leaving Luis with an uncastable and two lands, and Gerard in very good position, with a hate spell still on board and a grip full of cards. And Gerard lays another land. And passes the turn. Now, one of the most interesting parts about Gerard's deck for me is the two hero of Bladehold. I have never seen, well, I'm not going to say I've never seen anyone else run this card, but it's very few and far between. Yeah. Legacy. The person I've seen run it is Craig Wesco. Yes. Yeah. Now, obviously, Hero sees a lot of play in, uh, you know, formats that don't include Force of Will. <laughs> right. But, I mean, where the power of a Hero is, if you can put it into play and have it not be, uh, have it resolve and have it not be killed, lots of ifs, what you're looking at is generally two swings, you're dead. Right. It's a two swing type of card. Now, basically the way Team Italia works, Gerard's going to one-for-one one his opponent a bunch, maybe try and him and pick up a little two-for-one, and then after each player has exhausted their resources, he'll drop his hero and theoretically ride that to victory. Sort of like a white Jace. It's oh. a good description. Not even close to as good, but hey, neither is white. <laughs> <laughs> sad, sad truth about legacy white decks. Sassy.
So Luis, cracks his polluted delta. We'll see what he goes and grabs here. <laughs> and somehow we are still in turn three of this game two uh, with 18 minutes left on the clock. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how this happened or well, where one of the, the things to remember is that they have more time. There was an extensive judge ruling right. uh, that I, I'm not sure how long it took, but that definitely ate up a ton of the official clock. These players do have an extension of some sort. So Gerard cracks his Nihil Spellbomb, draws a card. Pretty interesting choice by Gerard. If it were me, I probably would have just kept that Nihil Spellbomb in play. Because this lets Luis do something this turn, like a careful study into a reanimation spell, get back the Imperial Archangel. We'll see if he can pull that off here. Draws one, draws two. One discard will certainly be Imperial Archangel. Luis running low on cards in hand right now. He's only going to have two after this discard. Swamp and Entomb. Okay. So he doesn't wow. discard the Archangel. Does that mean he drew show and tell? Probably. So we'll see if he has the land plus the show and tell here. Out there on the um, floor, I see Melissa de Tora has moved up to two and one with Enchantress. Sort of an unusual choice. She said she liked to draw cards. I respect her for that. Yep. That, that is noble. I like to draw cards. And we see a wasteland on the underground, um, and Gerard comes in for seven. Drops Luis to 11. And you that's know, an amusing number, because next turn, that's how much Gerard can do if nothing else happens. And, you know, even if Luis drops that Archangel, damage will still kill it. He'll be able to block the hero and kill it in combat, but Gerard will be left with four tokens. Oh, oh. Wow. vindicate! Wait, is that island. a misdirection? Does he have a misdirection in his hand? Oh, he can't. He would have used it for sure, right? Be sure? I think it's a show and oh. tell. Oh, I can't see. If that was a misdirection, then Luis doesn't know how vindicate works. But I think oh. it's a show and yeah, that that's a show and tell. Okay, if you say so, you're probably correct. And now Luis is in a really tough spot. He has to do something this turn or he loses. Well, he just says go. I'm not sure what he's got that he can do. Uh, <laughs> dark Echoing Truth. Echoing Truth would do echoing it. Echoing Truth. He can crack the land, wait for the tokens uh, to come and play, crack the land, and then echo, echo, echo up the tokens. Yep. He would only take three damage if he's got the Echoing Truth. Exactly, because if you're unaware, Echoing Truth will bounce all the tokens with the same name, so all soldier tokens, but he doesn't have No, it. to game, game three with the Reanimator deck on the play, yep. a very dangerous position for Gerard Fabiano. And as of, well, so far, both players have held serve. Now up to Gerard to break it. We'll see if Luis can uh, hold on for this victory here. He's definitely favored on the play, though. Players will go back to their sideboards. Maybe Luis rethinking his choice of show and tell. It does seem pretty good. The, the only hate cards that he's seen so far, one Nihil Spellbomb. So he doesn't have a heck of a lot of information to go off of. But in general, if I see a Nihil Spellbomb, I'm probably going to rule out Leyline of the Void. Just it's so unusual to see someone run Nihil or Tormod's Crypt and Leyline of the Void. Yeah. Um, the one time that I have seen that style of uh, choice happen 
is when you occasionally see someone run what I like to call the, the uh, Go Dennis Vitiguris anti-dredge strategy, which is four separate kinds of hate, but only one of. I like so, that strategy a lot. One ley line, one Tormod script, one, let's say, Ixlid Jailer, one, let's say, Surgical Extraction. Now, there are obvious weaknesses to this approach, but um, when Godenis was testing very heavily for Pro Tour Valencia, one of the things he was uh, discovering was that he could figure out really good plans against any particular sideboard hate against Dredge, but if an opponent just did ones of each, it was still four hate, or five hate, or six hate. But there was no effective way for Godenis, as the Dredge player, to sideboard against the different kinds. And uh, so that was the kind of hate he feared the most, and he later would use in uh, PTQs and other small events when he was fighting against Dredge himself. I mean, at that point, when your opponent's doing that, it's just a guessing game. You have to say, okay, well, which part of the hate do I want to try and play against? He has one Pithing Needle in his deck, do I yep. side an Ancient Grudge? Oh, awesome. Or sorry, not Pithing Needle, Tormod Script. Right. Do I side in my Pithing Needle or my Ancient Grudge? Right. Well, for one card, probably not. Uh, especially in a blue deck which can dig for a specific yeah. card. Now, the obvious weakness of this style of strategy is that Leyline, one of your best cards against a deck like this, you're very unlikely to have a Leyline in the opening hand, and which means that you're likely to draw your Leyline when you find it ever, and you're going to have to cast it. Right. And we see a handshake for game three. Yep, pre-game good luck handshake. At least knocking some cards off Gerard's deck, but none got revealed, so that's okay. Each player has their seven. I see two Force of Wills for Luis, a Brainstorm. Those are the only cards I can make out, though. Not sure if he has a way to dump a Fatty yet. It looks like they're both going to keep. Luis leads with Misty Rainforest, and will say go. Drug would love a one mana disruption spell right here. He hasn't had a, a turn one disruption spell the entire match. I think we're slightly off camera missing his Im Kibler impersonation. <laughs> wow, and again, Gerard, no one mana disruption spell. I, I wonder if we're going to be seeing a surgical extraction on this entomb target that I expect to see happening. Hmm. Yeah, or perhaps a, a blast on any sort of ponder or brainstorm attempt. Just an island, quote-unquote, just. <laughs> Luis draws. No end of turn brainstorm. Happy to see that. That's mainstorm, main phase brainstorm is where it's at. There we go. So brainstorm comes out. Turn two. Gerard fetching a red land. He is going to try and blast that card. One card that Luis hasn't drawn any of this match is Days. A card that's really effective against Gerard. Red elemental blast. Counter. Land for the turn from Luis. And he'll pass the turn. Now Gerard really needs to put the hammer down here with either a Thoughtseize, a Duress, or a Him. That's what he'd love to do. And here it comes, Inquisition of Kozilek. That one works. Luis, thinking about his play, responds, sacrifices the Scalding Tarn. We might see a Brainstorm here in response. We might see a Spell Pierce. Right. Luis goes looking for a basic island, wants to protect against that wasteland. Gerard could have not led with the wasteland, but he was trying to play around days there. So Luis shuffles up. And this does look like a brainstorm. Let's hide stuff. 
And now this still isn't a loss for Gerard because he gets to see Luis's hand and Luis has to burn a brainstorm without having a shuffle effect right away. He's still not jumping for joy about it. No, definitely not. So he puts two back and he'll reveal a hand of Sphinx, Gristlebrand, Delta, and two Force of Will. So Gerard oh, whips on that. Oh boy. But the good news for him is that there's no way to put a fatty in the art, and there's no way for Luis to reanimate it. Yet. Could be on the top of the deck. He could have a uh, show and tell on top. Ooh, yeah, that's right. Or a careful study into a, a reanimation spell. That doesn't look like it. I wonder if we'll see a swamp here. I suspect we will. And if I'm right, the art on the card in Luis's hand was Thoughtseize. So it appears that he has no gas at all right now. Is that the uh, lily pad flower swamp? I'm not sure. Nope. <laughs> Thank you for that zoom in. <laughs> Our esteemed director. Show and tell, do we have it? Nope, that's a discard Thoughtseize spell. back. What do you got? Hey, buddy, what's over there? Wow, look at that hand. Swords and... A, wow. A ton of land. A ton, ton, ton of land. And now I can say without a doubt that Gerard probably should have mulliganed this one. Yeah, I'm with you. You might hear Christian Calcano in the background there saying easy game. Looks like he's 3-0 and right now. So Gerard, main face fetches up a land. Maybe he drew a Liliana here. I mean, even a Liliana, I wouldn't call it a good card right now. No, all that would do would... Oh, Thalia. There we go. Okay. Thalia is not bad. That's all right. So start. Slow down, Luis. Luis. No. <laughs> wow, Luis. Force of Wills, the Thalia. You see, if, if it were me, I probably wouldn't be too afraid of that card. Gerard looking for something to do. Does he have something? Land, go. No, nothing. So they're playing a waiting game right now. Each player trying to draw into a way to advance the game. Luis has drawn an animate, Dad. But nothing to target, save the Thalia. And I don't think a 1-1 Thalia is going to do it for him right now. <laughs> I mean, a Thalia... was that, a 14 turn clock? That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> Better than this infinite turn clock. That's true. Now, any sort of him to Turok is very dangerous for Gerard because... If he casts it and hits the fatty but not the animate dead, he's in real trouble. Especially if that fatty's Gristlebrand. Gristlebrand, that lifelink is no joke. No, it's not. Sort of an unusual legacy game. Sometimes these games do stalemate, but most of the time they're over pretty quickly one way or the other. Well, with the sheer amount of discard, force of will, things like that, um, powerful sideboard cards like blasts, things can just disintegrate into both players waiting for something useful to do. Right. And as we see now, this is just a game of draw-go. Luis, I think, is waiting till he has eight cards in hand. He's going to try and discard the old-fashioned way. He still has that other force of will hanging out in his hand. Yeah. Gerard knows it. We're not sure if he has a blue card, though. So he'll go fetch up a Badlands at the end of the turn, thinning out the deck a little bit.
He would love to draw something like a Sensei's Divining Top right here. Wow. Or really any spell. One top in the deck. Wasteland. The Badland. Tap for Ooh, Bob. Boy. Dark Confidant. Bob is pretty good right now. We'll see if Luis forces this. He did force a Thalia. But he's at seven cards in hand. Next turn, he'll be able to discard. Very dangerous to let Bob survive. It is. So Luis, eight cards in hand. We'll see if he has a play. And it looks like he's, well, he's looking at the Gristle brand. Terastodon, okay. Interesting. Oh, elephants. Bob says Vindicate. So Gerard dropping to 13. Let's we'll see what he draws here. This is going to get out of hand quick. Yeah, Gerard really needs to pull the trigger on some sort of discard spell here. Let's look at your hand. Duress. Duress you. Now Luis is going to think about this. He still does have that force of will, like we said. We're unsure if he has a blue card, though. Target opponent. Yeah. Cannot be misdirected. Luis uh, playing it pretty close to the chest here. Hard to tell what he has in hand. The only ones we know for sure are Force of Will and Animate Dead. You can see that Force of Will, but it's really hard to make out the rest. Yeah. Is that a white spell in there? I'm not sure. Oh, here Let's we go. Let's it happen. Reanimate. Animate Dead reprint. Echoing Truth. Days. Force of Will. Gristlebrand. Gristlebrand. And that last card on the right's an Entomb. So, this is interesting. Luis Perez has no more land. So if Gerard can successfully wasteland that swamp, he's, he'll lock Luis out of black mana, at least for the time being. I don't mind getting that Force of Will out of there. Right. That would make two Force of Wills left in Luis's deck. And even if he gets a Gristlebrand into play, it would be at a pretty low life total. But what will he take? This is the question. Wow. Huh, that's interesting. Maybe Gerard We don't know what's in Gerard's hand. Gerard has been drawing for a long time here. Yeah, Gerard thinks he can beat the Terastodon, but not a different fatty. Maybe he doesn't want to face off against something like an Iona. Or an Elishnorn. Dread lays a land. And this looks like a Vindicate. That will target the Swamp. And now if you're Luis, you just have to force a little. Oh here. my god, yes. There's, there's no question. Daze is useless. Oh no, not Echoing Truth. Huh. <laughs> now, I, I really don't understand that. I'm not sure what Daze is going to do at this point in the game. Gerard has seven lands. Hiro. I guess Gerard wanted to bait out that Force of Will. Yeah. Daze you? Really? Really, Luis? So this is there you go. So let that resolve. There you go. And now Gerard will say go. Luis for his turn, drawing yet another reanimation spell. Now, Luis does have three swamps in his deck. It's not like he's going to be crippled on uh, on mana should he have fetch lands. It's not as though he only has underground to go get. Right. He can go get swamp. His time, though, is running out. This Dark Confidant is going to provide some, an inexhaustible stream of card advantage here for Gerard. Inquisition. Reanimate, reanimate, animate dead, daze, 
Gristlebrand. He'll take an animate dead. And now he'll him, hoping to hit both of the reanimates. They have a 13 minute extension, so uh, they do have probably plenty of time to finish out this match. So it seemed like Luis was going to win this match handily after game one. I'm, I'm not really sure what happened. Uh, I have uh, some thoughts. I believe, didn't he have the opportunity to force a will this Dark Confidant? He did. He did. I, I would not have forced a will the Thalia. I would have saved it. Yeah, I agree. Here we go. Gerard's thinking here. Oh, wait, no, he decided not to him. Huh. Nothing wrong with that. And here we see Luis with a fetch land that is forced, if he wants to get black, forced to get a dual land. Oh, wow, why, why didn't Gerard him him? Well, Luis dropping to eight, he can no longer reanimate Terastodon, nor Gristlebrand. He's going to have to go for the Thalia, I think. I don't think he has any other play. Yeah, there it is. There's the Thalia. Louis As you said, look at that. Luis is going to try and kill Gerard with his own confidant. I predict that that will not work. Well, that's a four. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard at nine. I predict that that will not work. No, probably not. Luis has to try, though. That's pretty much his only victory condition at this yep. point, short of drawing a force of will off, or a, uh, a show and tell off the top. Wasteland for Luis's black source. Yep. Swords for two mana. And what are you thinking about casting here, Luis? Looks like a daze, so he'll pay one and cast daze. Have to imagine Gerard will pay the one here. He's got plenty of mana at his disposal. I mean, he does know that Gerard has the hero in hand, but why not just try to stop the hero? So Gerard lets his swords be countered. And plays hero. Threatening lethal. And now Luis is stopped by the Thalia he has in play. I mean, even if he draws their exact right cards, which I don't think it's possible, I, he just is gone. Yeah, this is going to be a two mana careful study. And uh, he's dead on board here. Yeah. Gerard Fabiano against all hope. In this crazy game where he kept uh, a bit of a loose hand, it didn't have much to do in it. It had a ton of land. He was uh, he was relying heavily on two wastelands, but Luis didn't cooperate. He fetched up basics. So Bob reveals a wasteland. Bob, the dark confidant, another invitational winner. And these guys will crash in. And there's the handshake. Gerard Fabiano advances to three and oh, oh. Wow. Tight, tight match there. You know, it seems like Luis's deck just really didn't cooperate with them. He didn't have a great starting hand in game two or game three. Well, Gerard did stop that first brainstorm. Yep. Um, and that was a really, really big deal. And then Gerard hit him with a discard spell, and then hit him with another discard spell. Right. And, uh, you know, just it all kind of worked out for him. I don't think that this would be a matchup I would want to play where I Gerard with my main and sideboard. 